G'day folks. Well, I just made a bit of a victory with the uh, VFD that I'm putting in the tyre machine. Um, this is a little 0.7 kilowatt drive. I had it for a while and the tyre machine's been in here since then, even before then, and getting in the way. So, uh, I finally found out what I was doing wrong. I mean, I had the switch hooked up just fine. I'm using a two-line operation mode one, so you've got common connected to two normally open switches in this case it's a rotary key switch you go left for forward right for reverse or there um, whatever you want to do you can reverse the wires on it pretty straightforward uh, but it was never working I went through assign double check the assignment run forward reverse content zero one and two under I think it's P double uh, PO6 programs uh, list number six. Uh, PO61 is run forward. I enabled that one and that one, double checked it all. Still no go. Went back to this thing. Input one to two terminals, external operation by default. Terminal control mode P0.01 equals value of one. And the terminals used to select forward reverse operation. Now I put it to term um, value zero for external operation. That's not correct. This is not terminal used to select forward reverse. When it says terminal, it means the um, pad here. This is the reverse of what it should be. I've, I've assigned it value one again, because I originally went and actually assigned it value zero so that it would um, run externally, or so I thought. Uh, that's not true. I actually told it to run off the uh, terminal keypad. So that, right from the start, it led me astray and I've been messing around with it ever since. Now that I've reassigned it o, uh, to value one, what do you know? The external switch works. Forward, reverse. Oops, and the barrel fell off. Yeah, they're just two momentary switches, that's all you need. You can just bridge out common Line 3 goes to CM on the uh, header, and then these go to X1 and X2. X1 being forward, X2 being reverse. And that's, your, that's just your standard um, negative 24 volt common. It is not positive 24 volt. Do not put it to the positive. Just go X1 for switch 1, X2 for switch 2, and CM for common. And both of these CMs here and here are linked together. They're the same common. They just give you two ports to run uh, extra common wires off or even run it to a terminal strip and branch off from there. You can do whatever wiring you want outside of it and they've given you adequate connections up to X5. There are X1 to X5 are all programmable digital inputs on these drives. See there you've got um, various assignments. You just assign the number that you want and it'll, t it'll do it. It does it just fine. I've played around with this a fair bit. Yeah, you got common there, CM, going to one side of the switch, and then each one of those just assigns a, uh, or you, you assign the command you want that terminal to do. You, I can change X1 from forward to reset or anything, really. I could, for, I could tell it to just jog the motor. Uh, there's all kinds of things I could do. Um, analog input, again, that's external potentiometer. I don't need it in this case. I just keep it locked at 50 hertz with a one second ramp up. Um, motor just naturally coasts to a stop, no, no injection braking, nothing fancy. I'm not going to do anything stupid and really tax this drive, plus it's a tyre fitting machine. I don't want ridiculous amounts of start up torque or anything. I actually want it to start off a little bit gentle and then ramp up. I might even increase the ramp up time to make it a bit easier to uh, A, control a bead that's trying to slip off the tyre lever or the foot of the machine and B, uh, not damage anything. So it's actually better to run a tyre machine on one of these than it is just straight AC to a three-phase motor. So there you go. These Chinese manuals will be the death of me one day, literally. <laughs> it'll tell me to set the drive up and how to run it properly one day. I'll do that and it'll emit a bolt of electricity and kill me. <laughs> you never know with these things. I haven't even bothered with three-wire operation. I could do three-wire, but there's no point. I want a rotary drum switch. It's just a three-phase drum switch that you rock back and forth with your foot. I, I'll stick with that. That's the original design of it. You need both hands free to fit a tyre. You don't want a handheld switch like that. Uh, 
yeah, just use the original drum switch. Strip all the three-phase wiring out. Use the drum switch to control. All I'm going to do is take the wires off that um, key switch and uh, stuff them into the side of the uh, three-phase drum switch. Just the same. You've got two normally open contacts. That's it. But yeah, this light came on. That little one at the top there came on as soon as I enabled the external on. That's technically telling me the keypad's actually doing it, but it's not. <laughs> so something's ass about in this drive. I don't know if it's just this drive or all of them, but that last command, setting for external control, is reversed. That's all I can figure. That's all I can tell from this thing. So I did everything else by the book, and it didn't work. As soon as I tell it to run off the keypad, which I noticed I had it set to run off external, but I could still use the keypad, which I sort of expected maybe you could do that but no now I've got it set right I can only forward reverse with this the keypad does nothing I can press start stop on that and it does absolutely nothing so yeah lesson learned I should write manuals on these things somebody did suggest that I should write proper manuals that people can understand and sell them and I'd probably make a fair bit of money anyway thanks for watching this thing's working let's stuff it in the base of a machine and find out how well it works Actually, no, I'm going to gut an old uh, 2KVA UPS that's had suffered a uh, control failure and build a cabinet for it on the back of the machine because there just isn't enough room inside the machine for it. And if you de dismount a, uh, like a scrap tyre that's been sitting outside with a hole in it, chances are a litre of water is going to come pouring down over the top of the machine through the holes that the airlines come up through and straight into the drive. So it's better that it's in a splash-proof enclosure at the very back of the machine where power and air naturally go in anyway yeah i'm not going to bury it in the middle of the machine with all the pneumatics and everything it's just a recipe for disaster oh well thanks for watching um, by the way i bought this on ebay as well you can pick them up on ebay for i think this one is i think this one was about 120 dollars and so far so good at least i got it working <laughs> it wasn't a complete waste of money